Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be going over how to wire Big Tree Tech's Manta M5P to your printer. I did a previous video on how to set up all the jumpers, but have gotten lots of questions on how to actually wire this thing up to the printer. I didn't uh, make the video when I wired it up to this printer because I was learning myself on how to do it and I was uh, honestly a little bit overwhelmed with all of the the, the wiring and everything else to then also shoot the video. But now that I got everything working and wired properly, I feel comfortable enough to review everything with you guys. That way it'll help you out because unfortunately the Big Tree Tech documentation, in my opinion, is lacking the information to give you the amount of confidence to tackle this job yourself. Guys, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turn on your notification bell, and leave me some comments. I love reading the comments. And do my best to respond to you guys as soon as I see them. Alright, let's get started here on the right hand side. And I'm going to move the camera over here to maybe get the, the best uh, lighting. So, the way this board is laid out, if you have it oriented with uh, the Big Tree Tech name facing up, then uh, the order will be as follows. Alright, the first stepper driver that you're going to run into is going to be your X stepper driver and this is the one if you're new to 3D printing you veteran guys out there this might be a little uh, bit simplistic but the very first stepper driver labeled X is what moves the print head left and right on the gantry on the left hand side you got the limit switch and the limit switch the trigger pin is the very top pin and this board gives you the ability to either trigger it with a ground, which is how I have it set up and how a standard Creality board is set up, or you can also trigger it using uh, a positive uh, signal. So if you wanted to trigger it with a positive signal, you would use the bottom most pin and the top pin. Middle pin is the ground pin. On the right-hand side, you have the stepper motor wire that plugs into this stepper driver and the label on the board is M1 so M1 is X stepper motor next one is your Y axis so Y axis is what moves the bed forward and back left of that you got the Y limit switch again Trigger on top, it's triggered with ground, which is the middle pin. On the right hand side, you have the Y stepper motor wire. And the order of this wire is if, if you needed to know that, it's pin one, two, three, and four. So one, two, three, and four. Next one is your uh, Z. So the Z stepper driver, you have the Z limit switch, and with the Manta M5P, you have dual a dual port here for your Z stepper driver, or uh, I'm sorry, for your Z stepper motors. So if you have let's say an Ender 3V2, and you got a a dual lead screw set up on the printer, you would use both ports here. So this one is labeled M3A, and the one below is labeled M3B. And in case I forgot to mention, the, the Y is labeled M2. Now the one thing that this extra port will not do is give you independent control of this stepper driver. Uh, uh, independent control, yeah, of this stepper driver. So it's essentially a splitter. That's what, that's what this is. It's built into the board, so you don't need to use any kind of a Y cable or anything like that. If, for example, you're going to wire it to a printer that has dual lead screws and dual limit switches, then you would do, like I did here in this case, is to configure this dual purpose stepper driver to be Z1, or your second lead screw control driver and again you have an independent 
limit switch for it, as well as an independent, a totally independent secondary Z stepper port. Now, this also, if you weren't using it for a dual, dual lead screw, could also be configured to be a second extruder. So if you have a dual extrusion system, but you don't have the dual lead screws or you don't have the need for independent control of the dual lead screw, then you can use this one as your extra extruder uh, control driver. And again, it has an end stop. You have the output for the stepper uh, motor. But in addition to that, you also have down here, it's labeled TH1, and right now I don't have anything in it because I'm not using it this way, but this would be the thermistor for the hot end on the extra extruder. And then lastly, you have uh, the E, and it looks like I lost my little label. I had a label down there. So this would be uh, the E stepper driver. It does not have a end stop or limit switch. So this one is a dedicated extruder driver. It, uh, the thermistor port is labeled TH0 on the board. And then you have the uh, driver port on this side. So the extruder driver port is on the right. And it looks like I found my little my little sticky E. Put this guy back on here. All right, so there you got it. All right, so here's a, a full shot of it. And I'll zoom in a little bit so you guys can see everything. to the left so you can see both the labels so it's m1 on the very top and then next to the stepper driver says motor one m2 motor two m3 a motor three m3 b again this is the one with the built-in splitter and then m4 motor four driver and then lastly m5 motor five driver Okay, let's move over to the middle of the board. Get this guy up out of the way. All right, so I'm going to move these guys over to the side. Give you guys a good view in here. All right, so on the center of the board, on the very top, and I'm running Clipper, so I have no need for the display ports. But if you guys were running uh, standard firmware, then you would you would make use of one of the display ports. In my case, I'm not using it, so I have nothing connected there. Underneath display port number two, this is labeled EXP2, is the port for the probe. And if I pull this out, You'll see that underneath that port, it's labeled probe. Should you see that? Yeah. So it has a label that says probe, and that's where you would connect your CR touch or uh, BL touch. And this wire and wiring uh, sequence is the standard CR touch. So you would have the red would be over here on the left side, and then the far right would be the white. So that's how you would oriented on the board this uh, port up here because it says IND uh, detect so this is an induction the next one down is labeled fan 1 and it's kind of hard to see because it's in between the CB1 and this plug but it's labeled fan 1 and this first one uh, is for the hot end so this is the one that turns on when your hot end either reaches a certain temperature or when you first turn on the printer this this fan will run 
The one that follows it follows the same wiring color scheme as uh, Creality uses for their parts cooling fan. You have the positive lead, which is yellow, and the negative lead, which is blue. The Pi fan is the one that's underneath the parts cooling fan. So if you were using, uh, wanted to connect something here, it would, uh, the, the, the Pi was, would be what triggers this fan. So I think it triggers with like 3.3 volts. The one that's underneath it is the fan for the case. So this is the case fan. It's labeled just fan. And over here on the left is the, the case fan itself. So you can see it mounted right here. This is the case fan. And that's what's connected to this, to this port right here. Underneath that, you have the thermistor uh, bed port. So it's labeled thermistor, so TB, thermistor bed. And that's what these two cables are. Underneath that, on the screw down terminals, the first set of screw down terminals, so this would be directly underneath this TB uh, port. You have the negative for the heated bed, the positive for the heated bed, and it doesn't matter if these are reversed, but I've, I just followed the, the manufacturer's schematic, and that's how they had it, so negative on this side, positive on this side. The ones that follow, so screw down terminal number three and four would be your power supply input so in this case I'm using a 24 volt power supply 24 volt positive 24 volt negative you could also supply this with 12 volt positive 12 volt negative if you're running a 12 volt system and then uh, next to that like I said was the uh, hot end thermistor and the two green cables that are directly under that is the hot end heater cartridge. So the first two is hot end number one. If you were configuring the flexible, if you were configuring the flexible stepper driver, uh, which which I have labeled as Z1, if you configure this Z1 as a dual extruder, then you would use this secondary uh, thermistor port along with the secondary extruder heater cartridge so that would be these two open pins here on the right side all right so guys that's pretty much everything on that part of the board lastly let's go over the adxl 345 connection so if you were going to use the accelerometer and you're going to follow a lot of my guides, I have them wired this way. So it's uh, the very first wire here is uh, the white wire. The one that follows it is a 3.3 volt uh, positive. Then you got the yellow wire, green wire, orange wire, and then lastly you have the the, the negative. So this is a negative for the ADXL 345. The way the pins work, the very pin number one is the yellow pin. So it's got it's pin one. Then the one that's next to it is uh, is pin two. So the yellow one is 3.3 volts. The red one is five volts. And this is and and I'm going to tell you what the first pin number is here for the ADXL 345. So this is how it goes. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen is your first pin for the ADXL 345. After that, it's pin uh pin seventeen, pin nineteen. Pin 21, pin 23, and the last pin, which is the ground pin, is pin 25. And if you look at the board, if I pull this out, you'll see that the last pin, which is 25, is 
marked in black. So it's got like a little black uh, mark on it. And the 3.3 volt pin is marked in yellow. So just make sure if you're, connect if you're connecting up the ADXL345 that the power for it is the uh, second pin. So that's how you know that you have this thing plugged in properly and that the last pin is the, uh, the negative. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this back in. Goes just like that. Let me see if I can get you uh, an angle view from the side. Get you guys in real close. Right? So it's going to go like this. Just like that. So if you see that yellow, that little yellow block is lined up with the red wire here. And then just push this thing in. And the nice thing is that you can use a standard uh stm connector for this it just doesn't have the locking tab which you don't you don't need anyway this is uh usually a standard header pin but this connector also works here and guys pretty much that's it that's all you, you need to know with those wires you can wire this board up with no problem I'm going to link my previous video in the video description. That's the one that has all of the jumper settings. That way you guys can feel confident to swap out your board on whatever printer you want. Guys, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. Turn on your notification bell and leave me some comments. I love reading the comments and do my best to get back to you guys as soon as I see them. All right, guys, this video is a wrap. See you in the next one. Take care.